Sturgis Dodge, who's filling in for Tony Sharp, who is indisposed. Um, this is you. That's me. Yeah. Uh, Elise Burns, Terry Askew, and Dick Byrne. Uh, we're also missing Andrea. I'm drawing a blank on her name. Uh, Hoffman. Hoffman. Thank you. Uh, Andrea Hoffman. And Katie Downs. And Katie Downs and Jeff Trunzo, yeah. who are not here today. Okay. Um, Tony sends her apologies. Okay. She's trying to keep her strength up for tomorrow's meeting. <laughs> yeah. She's got some kind of under the weather thing. Um, we don't have minute today. I don't believe we have correspondent. We do have a person in the audience who wants to ask a question. And I told him we, we take him first if he wants to ask his question. Would you like to ask a question now? Yes. You need to come forward to the mic and identify. Give us your name and your address. 110 Rogers Street. Okay, wait, can you wait till you get to the microphone so you're recorded? Mm -hmm. Your name and address. Bob Schnepfe, S-C-H-N-E-P-F-E. -E. It's German and it means snipe, <laughs> Okay. which is a bird. Oh, yes it is. <laughs> And Michael. your address again? 110 Rodney Street. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And your question? Well, let me lead up to it first. You have a rule, I think, that says if you take everything off your lot and build a new house, when you're finished, you have to put up three trees, and I think they're three inches in diameter. I have nine trees. One of them is four feet in diameter, probably the, the, the biggest oak tree in Rehoboth now. The rest of them are over a foot in diameter, except for a, uh, what's it called, a crepe? Crepe myrtle. Crepe myrtle. And that's what a lot of people uh, plant. Yep. <laughs> Unfortunately. My question is, why do I have to get a permit to cut down a couple trees, and I want to cut down two trees. They're, they're holly trees, and I can't stand in the spring walking around on the lawn getting, why do I need a permit to cut down a tree? Why can't you come up with a, a number? I don't care what the number is, five, six, seven, and let me cut down my excess trees. I'm going to, I'm going to, well, does any of you, are you okay with me fielding this question? Sure, please. Um, it's, what you're asking, I believe, is a question about our tree code. And tree ordinance. Our tree ordinance. Yeah. And we are a group that's an advisory committee on trees. The, the, there is a committee called the Law Oversight Committee, which is looking to revise the tree ordinance. So um, Liz Lingo is our city arborist. She is the person who could tell you what you need to do and how the code applies. The, um, the committee that's looking at revising the code is the Law Oversight Committee. Um, and I, I happen to be a member of that, you know, in full disclosure. And our group advises the city and that committee. Um, so, I mean, we hear your concern. And I tried it years ago to get permission, and Liz came and looked. I guess it was Liz. How long ago? <laughs> came and looked at the trees and said, no, they're fine. You can't cut them down. And she, she's interpreting the code as it's written, because that's what she has to do. Let me ask you another question. Okay. How much does it cost if I cut the trees down? Oh, again, that's in the code, and there's a fine. Um, uh, what's the current fine for cutting down a tree without a permit? 250 to 500 a tree plus replanting um, either inch for inch or double if it's uh, a certain okay. size. I didn't hear what you said. Either inch, it's 250 to $500 penalty per tree plus um, replanting either inch for inch or double if it um, is of a certain I just, large size. I just, I also just planted two plus, f two fruit trees. Yeah, plus um, whoever does the work loses their license in the city for two years. So if it's a company, 
The reason I asked, I think I have somebody that doesn't care about the license. <laughs> well, that would be if they're working without a license, that would be a police well, matter. <laughs> yeah, so that, that you don't, does, they don't want to get into that. <laughs> that business would risk serious problems mm -hmm. by, by coming into the city mm -hmm. and doing that work without having a permit. Yeah, my, my other problem is I have a, a neighbor across the street that if you do anything and don't have a green card in your window, she calls. Yeah. Well, so, I, and I would suspect, I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'll just mention that we have a tree ordinance, and the tree ordinance was developed back in 2006. Six. So this is, it's been around for, you know, going on 13 years now. And, and there have been issues with it in terms of, of, of uh, you know, you know how, how, it, how it has been, uh, you know, enforced and enacted and so forth. And, and, and even now, you know, this, these many years later, there are still issues with it and people <clears throat> finding fault with certain aspects of it and so forth. But the, obviously the idea of it was basically a, a, to, be, to be able to kind of protect trees for people not just willy-nilly mowing trees down and cutting trees down and so forth and so on. And that, that is the law of the city currently. And I, and I, can, I can understand and appreciate, uh, you know, the, the issues that you have re regarding you know, you know, dealing with these trees on your property and so forth, but I mean, uh, the, 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 you know, your your uh, concerns about walking on holly leaves and trust me, I've been there, uh, and, and um, um, you know, it, it's it's a concern, but it, it, but I think we as the city, as it as one of the things that I think brought the tree, the tree ordinance about was that that's one of the basic uh, the special things about the city of Rehoboth that other beach communities don't have, which is we have trees, you know, it's, 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 it's not like most other places because most of the beach communities are on a, a sandbar or, or a barrier island or something like that. We're on a headland. We actually have the, uh, the soil and the, and, the, and the hard pan underneath our soil to be able to support trees and so forth. And it's, and it's something that we really want to, we as a community want to protect. Now, and, and, and since we've had this ordinance, it's been kind of a, a you know, a, 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 a give and take with regard to balancing the, 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 you know, the values of the community and people's individual rights. I mean, I understand that you feel like this is my property, I ought to be able to do what I want to do with it. And I, no, just, I understand that. You know, uh, but I, all I'm getting at is, you know, well, I'm, well, I'm just going to, you know, or, and try to answer your question at least. You know, is that that is the value that we collectively, you know, uh, the, the, the the board of commissioners back, you know, 13 years ago, uh, you know, felt was important to protect the community. And we had these instances long before that where people cut down huge trees. I mean, a lot of trees, you know, especially over in the pines and so forth. And I think that was basically the impetus. That down the street from me, they cut down. Yeah, an oak that is bigger than mine. Right, and 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 and, and, I mean, and, you know, and if, built if a new were, house. You know, if you were, uh, you know, cutting your, you know, you know, you know going to demolish your house and rebuild your house and do all that other kind of stuff, and those trees are in the way, you'd be able to take them down free and clear. I mean, that, that, you know, there, there is a certain uh, one of them is a, one I want to cut down is about eighteen inches from the house. Right. So, so I mean, there are, there are other situations, you know, that, that if if you feel like the tree is. Uh, you know, imp impeding on the house or on the, on the structure of the house and so forth. You, you can, you, you know, you can claim that, but Liz is going to come out and look at it and she's going to assess that and maybe she had that while she has it. No, it's never been a permit yeah. filed yeah. for this. Yeah, yeah. So how do I get, how do I get a copy of this? It's, well, it's, it's, on, it's, it's, it's online. It's online. You can get it it's online. It's on the, uh, it's, oh, it's, it's, or it's you on. could read a copy if you went to the office right out here and asked to yeah. look at that. Yeah. But, but it was designed basically to try to protect the trees and the tree canopy in the city. That's, that's, that's really what it was about. And, and, I, and I think it's, it's uh, uh, I mean, I think there's measures. You know, one, one of the aspects of having trees, we all benefit, I think we all benefit from having trees, but at the same time, it, they require maintenance, you know, and, and uh, um, having to deal with, you know, cleaning up after them and limbs coming off and all that other kind of stuff. But that's really, but, but I think it, the overall benefit for the city is that uh, you and your neighbors, you know, get the benefit from having the trees. You know, so uh, that we, you know, other communities don't have. So that, that's really the issue. 
So uh, the other thing that, that may be helpful to you is that at the July 19th commissioners meeting, the law oversight committee is going to be providing an update of the work they're doing on the tree ordinance. Okay, okay on the, that's what happens when you get yeah, yeah. At the July 19th commissioners meeting, there will be a discussion led by the law oversight committee on their work on the tree ordinance, on revising the tree ordinance, and there will be discussion. So that's Friday after, is that a week from today? Yeah, okay. yeah. At the 3 p.m. commissioner's meeting. Where will that be? Right here right in here. this room. And the Law Oversight Committee meets, um, I think, the second Wednesday of every month. Paul Coons was in Abramon. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. His father, actually. Mm -hmm. And he's built two huge houses, yeah. sold them for over $2 million a piece. There you go. <laughs> That's what happens here. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't, it's a, I good, don't it's a good conversation. This is, we need to move on. We've got a That's full okay. agenda. Yeah. And so okay. I hope we've answered Thank your you question. Very You're very welcome. Yeah. Thank, Thank you for coming, coming here. Thank, Thank, you, Thank you, you very much. I guess, the, I guess the thing I should do is put in for a permit to cut these trees down. Right. You could yeah. certainly yeah. talk yeah. to Liz yeah. about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you very okay. much. Sure. Um, Let's see, update by chair. The one thing I asked, I don't know if this is the time to do that, but um, Tony said, ask Liz about the Lake Avenue phase two. I hate to put you on the spot, but she kind of um, said, I said, what's going on with infrastructure? Um, Katie Downs has entered the room. Come on down. Da -da -da. <laughs> okay. Can you, can, can, you, can you provide some context to what Lake Avenue is? Okay, yeah. Lake phase Avenue one was. Phase, well, phase okay. one. Do you, phase do you want to? You probably did a better job than I. Obviously, I'm not the, the one in charge. That would be more um, city manager and the public works director. Got it. Um, but they have a continuation from when they did the first part of Lake Avenue, um, right outside our back doors here. So um, the bump outs. You're talking about the bump outs, and then well, the whole the streetscape. Whole okay. Yeah. So mm -hmm. phase two of that is to continue from Lake up to, um, I guess where it starts to turn into Olive, and then down Second Street, and okay. redoing that and bringing it in line with the rest of Lake Avenue. Okay. Um, at least that's my interpretation. I'm on the outskirts. we did put it in the budget. Okay, yes. yeah. I'm on the outskirts of the project. I know there's a lot of grant money involved Are with it. sidewalks or what? Uh, but hold on. I know there's a lot of grant money involved, and that's why it's later than they anticipated, because they were waiting for the grant money to come through, and they'd be told they'd be in this phase. Okay. Does that sound right? Yeah, okay. so I think it's matching money. And yeah. So the city didn't want to go ahead until... Till we and got the okay was available yeah and we just didn't get the round the first right. round that we wanted so i think that's all relatively in place now so they've begun drawing up um design and maybe maybe they're at 50 percent. i don't think it's 100 um and part of it includes a crosswalk from the breaker like uh Right where the entrance is to City Hall, oh, okay. across that triangle is oh, getting extended, and there's going to be a crosswalk from there to the triangle with the landing pad um, because of the distance, and then over to um, the sidewalk along uh, the Italian Garden, like Gerard. And then um, they're putting a stormwater basin in the triangle and redoing a couple of underground um, pipes like the stormwater the outflow pipes into Lake Girard. Now maybe there's other there's probably a lot of other things along with it but that's what I know of. But is that one of these things where they don't filter the, the stormwater? I, I assume I, that, that's not really my yeah. area but yeah. I assume it's I mean, but, well I know yeah. they've but been. But that's the intent of Funky to, uh, to do more of a state of the art I know they've been processing of yeah, the stormwater as opposed to directly running in. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. they've been like crumbling to do it as phytoremediation. Is yeah. that okay? Right. They've been crumbling those pipes. If you really go and look at the ones right there going to Lake Girard, you can just visually see without any expertise that they don't look good. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then they're old sand filters. And they're mm -hmm. Yeah. Part of, so part of that is tree removal. So that's probably why Commissioner Sharp brought it up. There are. Um, 
two large trees that are going to be removed because they're directly over top where the pipes are. Um, I'm going to say a, the tulip poplar that sits where? there. Where? Are these here in the parking lot? Let, no, no, no. Park. They got in the park, I guess, beside the Italian garden. So, do you know where that little bench kind of sits on a platform? There's a tulip yeah. poplar to the yeah. left of that on the slope. That's yeah. going to go. And then um, for like closer to Bad Hair Day, so walk on down a little on that sidewalk, there's a linden, um, also rather large, that's going to be removed. And then, do they have to be removed? Uh, according to the engineers, yes, because the pipe is going to be replaced and the pipe is directly underneath them, so they have to trench it all out. Are there plans to replace yeah. the tree? Um, that's still being worked on because we'd like to do one for one replacement, but the trees can't go back in those locations. Right. So, um, and then there's a smaller Zelkova that should be able to re be retained but there will be construction just outside of its root zone. Um, it should be okay though, because it's, it's still young. Um, the two red buds that, you know those bump outs leaving um, Steve Elkins Way mm -hmm. that were installed as a change order for a city hall project? Yeah, so you remember those, and then we, had, we put the summer tire red buds and like some liriope, um, so they're about two years old now. Apparently, they have to be removed because the bump outs have to be completely redone because they're not aligned um, with the new sidewalk pattern. Um, and the cost of removing them, retaining them, and replanting them is higher than just new ones being installed at that two and a half inch range. So, um, other than that, uh, we're still in discussions with Public Works Director and the engineers about um, tree protection, fencing, and signage. So those are the things I sent some specs. So hopefully we'll be seeing some plans for that as they get further along. Um, well, and why wouldn't you use this as an opportunity to add a lot of trees in that area? Well, it's we're we're not adding any green space. We're not adding any parking, and we're taking an area that's currently a garden, the garden in the center, and converting it to stormwater basin. So we can probably add some shrubbery and stuff to that, but. They don't really like to see trees in there. Well, it's I mean, also we near get away the area you have talked about, which is in front of the breakers. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. is, can we do anything yeah. behind the breakers? So that's probably what commission that might be what Commissioner Sharp's referring yeah, yeah. to as well. That the city owns a portion of that that they maintain as lawn. Um, so there's been discussions as to why it was not used in this project. It's essentially just letting the breakers keep on having it instead of using it as parking or planting or stormwater. We just given it away, so I know that's been brought up before, and um, I don't have an answer as to why that property. Because that's when, a perfect spot. When green space trees. and parking is at such a premium, yeah. um, tree planting and parking, I would like to see an increase in both of them when we do projects, and we're not, unfortunately, not really getting it. On because this. it would be pretty easy to change to move the sidewalk in and yeah. have a planting strip. It'd be and really the, easy and have. We could probably, they could probably redo it into head in parking and s for some of it and still have okay. a good size planting it, location. Is, is Tony involved in that conversation? I mean, you say you're kind of on the periphery, but I, I wonder if, um, if Tony is. I don't know. Okay. Well, I don't. As, as commissioners, we've heard very few of these details. Oh, okay. So it's, yeah. I think it's taking place with the city manager right now. And, and public works director and the public engineers. Works, and it will come. I mean, Tony, Tony referenced this to me because I said to her, I said, Tony, do you have anything that you'd like to report regarding our role as uh, being involved in infrastructure and green infrastructure? And she said, ask Liz about this. So, so my assumption was that her, her thought was that this project showed our influence or our participation. Um, um, so I'm not quite sure how that... Because the engineer, so we've yeah. been working... Kevin and I have been working together with obviously the city manager's support and um, I believe it's GHD, but I don't want to misspeak on that. But whoever the engineer was provided a report listing the trees to be affected and or removed as well as the reasons why. I it was Beacon. Maybe it's Beacon, whoever it is. Um, I don't remember the name. Um, so they, I think you're right. Beacon. So is that a change and improvement in the way this, those projects would be done? Yes, we've never done that before. And as well as me adding the fencing and the okay. um, 
and Kevin is willing okay. willing to do. I said, can we have signs? He said, sure, whatever you want. So yeah, that's what <laughs> he we said. Were... If you want fence, you want signs, you can have them. Right. That's what we um, were hoping for on Henlopen Avenue. So and many of us commented on that. So it's good that folks, yeah, folks are listening. Yeah. So the limits of disturbance. We told fence signs. signs. Well, when we got the outfall, there was no fence. Or oh, Liz was okay. not involved at all. Oh, we didn't yeah. have any protection yeah. of the trees. Oh, okay. We didn't have any signage. Stay and away from to the trees. The contractors. Yeah, exactly. No, they they just signage to stay away from. Yeah, the they trees. just destroyed yeah, trees. Yeah, so generally <laughs> there's what kind of sign? So fast. But yeah. Yeah, so generally there's a sign like um, in my previous jobs and we would do tree protection, tree save areas. You would have a sign saying tree save, tree conservation, tree protection area in English and Spanish. Do not harm trees or something like that. And it gets posted every, uh, usually the specs say, but like say every 30 feet, it's required to have one of those signs so that the contractors, just an extra layer of precaution with them. But Liz, I'm trying to understand the, the area behind the breakers where that lawn is back mm -hmm. here. So who will have the final say on that as far as, you know, if we recommend at the advisory committee, hey, we, we think there should be some trees back there. Who has the final decision on that? And who would make that recommendation to whoever has it? I the guess plan? the city manager would probably have the final final say, but I would assume that something like that, it could come from this committee and or the commissioners or from this committee to the commissioners to be relayed to the city manager. Because that's structure. a perfect spot. You know, with this mm -hmm. yeah, commemorative just, tree, if we have money for it and it's on pro public property, it makes sense. Let's start right there. It's right in our backyard. Missed opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With the, both the parking and the trees. I mean, the good thing is, is that we're getting the crosswalk and we're getting um, a stormwater facility. So those are both going to be nice improvements. But yeah, I, missing opportunities is, you know, especially with new projects, you'd like to see every available speck of well, ground taken advantage of. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure we've got a net loss at this point with those two coming down. It's, and they're large trees. You won't yeah, be able to they won't, a three inch tree or two and a half inch tree it's isn't gonna. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we were always concerned about the, when that homeowner redid the, the house right. adjacent to that property, a yeah. lot of trees were taken That's down. A, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, think it's, you know, I think it's interesting that the site plan review really doesn't address these projects, um, the city project. Right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's all based on, you know, Coverage or you know lot right. sides and all kind of stuff, but it, you know I, I was like the magnitude of the outfall and this and other projects you know that uh, we don't weigh in on. Right. Yeah. City projects don't come in. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, what do you guys want to do? Put together some sort of statement to send to the commissioners and city manager. Yeah, I think yeah. we need. To, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I think we need to state exactly what we want, and it sounds like we submitted to to Tony as the head of uh -huh. our committee, uh -huh. and say we would really, yeah. you know, like to have the some, maximum does number of trees. Here, would, would someone here like to draft something? At least you want you and I want to draft it. At least, okay. Yeah, okay. We'll do it. With, with, I assume time is of the essence. Yeah, we'll do. Uh, yeah. yeah um, yes. Time is up. Time yeah. is up. Yeah. Yeah. Like so immediately. You, like, you know, okay. here to avoid kind of FOIA problems, if you want to draft something, it has to be very, very short. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm kind of hearing at a minimum that would be a place for replacement trees of large trees for the two that are getting two or mm -hmm. two that mm -hmm. are getting taken down. Yeah, and, um, and then we would so learn that, also from the director of public works. I mean, how much public land is there actually, yeah. and what, mm -hmm. and then what are the yeah, options? Yeah, I'm sure we could we just look at the plot, yeah. the survey. Yeah. Yeah. And if you send it individually to each of us as, as opposed to a group, then you avoid any kind okay. of that's not true. That's, okay, that's not true. I'm sorry. That's no. Okay, um, all right. Um, if you can send anything okay. to, to all of us, we just we, we can't, can't res talk respond. I mean, but you, yeah. it can, something can be sent okay. out ahead of time. So for if people want week. to respond and edit, what I'm hearing but you serial say is communications are as bad as a serial meeting. Yeah. You go to each yeah. person individually, or yeah. as, that's as okay. bad Thank as, as that clarification. Yeah. So let's clarify. People can respond. No, they, no, they can't. Respond. No, they you can't. Can send respond. something out in preparation, like for the next meeting. But well, I don't. We, think we don't have. We can't wait have for the next meeting. meeting. So I'm thinking about responding, and I'm wondering um, if people individually reply to her as opposed to group no. response. That still doesn't. Well, work. do you guys want to just quick hit bullet points now? She composes the letter and 
Yeah. We just hope yeah. she does a good job. Wanna, at least. I don't have an extra time. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, why, can't, why can't we just sort of, just, like here, just say, yeah, these right. are the points that yeah. we would like yeah, you to have, just, and then yeah. if you're just going to go ahead and do well, it. Just, and this is addressed yeah. to Tony and, as the commissioner. And we can yeah. trust two or three of you, yeah. so it's less than a quorum. Right. Yeah, yeah we can do that. To move okay. ahead with right. this on right. behalf of, yeah. what, okay. of the group. Yeah. So, but who do, do we address this officially to, to Tony. Tony? Okay. Tony, right. Tony and you know, Liz, as an arborist. Okay. Um, Liz, a question I have as a, an arborist. Sorry, I'm talking too close to that. Um, in the area that's behind the breakers, as far as if we preferred high canopy trees in that area, what would you recommend? And you two, Katie, since it's a landscape architect, how how many trees would you recommend in that area? It's a pretty decent area, size area. Yeah, we'd say, have to say that again. Um, the lawn that's located behind the Breakers Hotel mm -hmm. that faces toward Lake Girard, there's that huge expanse of lawn, which we found out is, I think most of it or all of it is owned by the city. Okay. So if you wanted to, if we said, look, we'd like to request some high canopy trees to be placed there, how many do you think could be placed in an area that large? And Liz, you might be more familiar with the size. Of that I, that's what I'm trying to imagine in my mind. Probably like, what, have five? Sure. We'd have to be careful of what tree we selected width wise that it's not having to be pruned consistently back from the hotel the so because it gets narrower as you get yeah, further there's right. one there already right I think there's like one little yeah, yeah there's, there's one, one little tree and the balconies right yeah, yeah. The balconies yeah. On that hotel. you could plant you could plant a smaller tree that gets a fairly good size kind of you, could, you could plant Magnolia, we could do five or seven. We'll think like Armstrong maples are still a tighter yeah. shape with a, mm -hmm. a still canopy, but tighter right. shape versus like say a London plane that's going to be spreading right. into everybody's right. poking into their hotel rooms. Right. So we, we could fit yeah. a few though. I'd okay. say three to a half a dozen yeah. decent sized trees. I mean, I mean, I'm thinking as a general thing, what we, I'm thinking what we want to say is just to, to look at that line as a place for replacement trees, you know, at a or minimum to one yeah, for right. one, but, uh, right. but, you know, ideally, you know, uh, assess the space yeah. for additional significant So why don't you trees. say, why don't you say five, at least, uh, at least five. five. So, I mean, we're doing this partially for stormwater, and this I is can. one of the most cost-efficient things you can do for stormwater yeah. in yeah. the world is planting trees. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're spending millions and millions on stormwater. Five trees is going to cost us, you know, less than three grand. And we're sitting on this city mitigation fund dedicated mm -hmm. toward trees. Well, this should be part of this project, land. though. Okay, well, yeah, it should be this part, should be part paid part for. Yeah, I don't know how specific the budget is. We want, we want our committee but, opinion and, and our um, acknowledged <coughs> role as um, someone with a seat at the table to, check if there's a you know, to gain us access to this planning process is, is what I'm hearing us say. And again, I would say at a minimum two, but you know, look at this as, as, a, as a plan. Um, so. Yeah, planned landscaping enhancement, mm -hmm. which will contribute to our canopy, the environment, right. storm water. We yep. also need to check and see if there's any licensing agreement between the hotel exactly. and the city for that yeah. land. I'm but just sort of wondering. There, 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 there is not. We don't, we don't, have, we don't have to worry about that now, right? I mean, no. someone should be worrying about that. But we I've never, missed. never no, seen it. Right. Okay. Because okay. right. okay. right. I always sort of wondered if they. I mean, there are many, many of those licensing agreements. But, um, yeah, but we do have a list of them, and I've never seen yeah. them on the list, but it's possible yeah. they're on okay. some other list okay. somewhere. <laughs> but right. all the licensing agreements can be, okay. yeah. yeah. Most of the licensing they agreements are for structures that were built on city property, so. Right, and most have a 90-day bailout. Yeah. yeah. So well, Liz, I'm yeah. just yeah. one point. You said a linden had to take come down and there was this, another tree. Tula, um, Tula, Tula poplar, Tula, linden. Tula, and the Zelkova might No, Zelkova is well, okay, just might be impacted by right. two buds. small red buds. Small red buds. Yeah. Which will be replaced in the same spot. They will be replaced. So we're only losing the Tula poplar and the Okay, linden. that's all I wanted to know. Um, okay, very can, good. Can, if you can do that, we can move on. Okay, we're sure. still trying to get us out of here by 11. Sure. Um, old business is me, and that's Arbor Day. Since we've met last, I've met with the teachers, and I've also, Andrea and I met with the staff of the um, uh, Art League and with Liz, and kind of the, we talked about a little di 
detail things. Everybody was very, very happy with everything. Loved the music. We're back on. We're getting the band back together. And um, so, um, kind of come up with a hot request. Okay. Okay. Costumes, maybe a dance steps and things. Yeah. Um, pyrotechnics. A, a pyrotechnics. I like that. I like that. Um, some big changes were kind of, let me see. Moving the date to before spring break was a request from the teachers, and, and Liz kind of said it doesn't matter when we observe it, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. that we do. The other the suggestion everybody thought was a good idea was to have the students on a weekend day in one of our city parks plant seed, 30 seedlings of trees to sort of reforest a park area, which Liz is going to find. Um, and the other thing was the teachers suggested as a way to get more people involved is to have an evening event. It was suggested by the um, education director, Paula Hammond, at the Art League. It might be better on a Saturday, not an evening, if we want more people to be there. Um, but the, the, struggle, the, the challenge last year was that we did it on school grounds, and they didn't want the public on the school grounds during the school, while school was in session. Hmm. So I don't know if you're all aware of the school. The new school was going to have a public kind of outdoor auditorium space. Small space. Yeah, yeah, where people can have films or shows, and their suggestion was we do a real, like a whole Arbor Day thing with a movie, with parents, children, and the public, with put it together with their science fair awards, have people come with booths from different organizations connected to trees and the environment and, and really make a big, a whole big thing out of it. Um, so it, it sounded like an interesting idea. And basically, the school would do the whole thing. I mean, it would be their program. We would just kind of piggyback. Um, um, so they got all excited about that. So those would be kind of the, the, the change, major changes. Um, so we move on to commemorative tree. We just asked yes. Liz tree. about the status of the tree we planted this year. I asked her to go check on it because it looks. I, was, I wasn't in when you emailed oh, okay. me, so I've just gotten back to work. I was yes. out. <laughs> it, it looks horrible. It looks the tree looks bad. It's pretty much all of them do right now. But yeah, there's some every, not they, they, they all look bad. Every leaf the trees in my house look bad. <laughs> well, but every leaf on it is totally brown. So I don't oh, know if, oh, if it dies, it dies, and we'll have to replace yeah. it. Okay. So. Yeah, there, there's definitely but take a look at it when you get tree moss this year. When you get over there. Yeah, I'm yeah. super I'm behind right conditions. Now. Yeah. Um, are we ready to move on to commemorative tree? Thanks. Sure. Um, just real briefly, an overview is um, based on the last meeting. What we did was uh, I reduced the uh, six-page brochure to four, to make it shorter, um, reduce some of the content. Uh, uh, we met with Liz, and we voted on, we had to come up with the final artist as far as who was going to be doing the tree that's going to be uh, located in the lobby. Just a reminder, and I wish I had printed it out, but... Um, Two months ago, I had, this is, this is the main lobby in City Hall. I don't know if you can all see it. Uh -huh. But what I did was, and I apologize because I meant to make pictures, I mean uh, copies. Um, what I did was I used just blue painter's tape oh, and okay. just set it up in the city. I, I can't yeah. <laughs> pass it down. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, so what we did was we recently voted. Uh, we had uh, proposals from a couple of different artists. We voted on the final one, and we've decided that it's going to be Bill Wolf. Bill Wolf is a local artist based out of the Hope at the Art League. Okay. What he did is he took uh, just kind of photoshopped. It's going to go more that way. Yeah, yeah. Photoshop the the hallway where you know just so you mm -hmm. understand the the stairs are here. Mm -hmm. So this is that whole first level. Uh, mm -hmm. He just did kind of a mock up in clay of a tree of how it would be shaped because the what we're attempting to do is something like this mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. the main trunk would be offset on the wall right. and then as we lit as we added commemorative leaves uh, it would kind of we would have three levels of leaves in terms of the three contribution levels the 350 600 dollar and a thousand each of those would have a slightly different color leaf signifying the level of their contribution and what we were trying to do was get something like this, where we would start with about 100 leaves, 
and we would have it shown kind of like blowing in the wind so that it would take up that long mm -hmm. area there. So that's just kind of a prototype to give you an idea. Um, nice. What I did this week is I met with the, um, so now that we've chosen the tree, we now have to decide on the leaves. Can sure. I ask a question about the mm -hmm. tree, the body of the tree? What is the material? Is it wood? Oh, I'm sorry, I should have mentioned. So this is going to be carved wood. Okay. He's, uh, Bill is going to be carving out of a piece of wood that's going to be about six inches deep. But obviously, by the time he carves in and makes it, you know, all the different oh, areas, it's going to be probably four inches deep. It will be attached to the wall. He's going to meet with the, um, I guess, the building maintenance company, yeah. the person to that's figure out how to attach it to the wall. And um, the, the object in terms of timing, I think I originally said this, backing up from if we're hoping to plant trees in the beginning of November, uh, in September we'd like to have a reception when we have this up with the leaves attached to the wall, have a reception in September. And there's so basically what that means is that during the time frame between now and uh, the second or third week in September, um, hopefully we'll very soon have the brochure done. I'd like all of you to try to you know, talk to friends and neighbors and businesses about making the contributions once we have all the details in. Um, but this would be put in by September 9th and then the leaves would then be put in by about September 9th or 10th afterwards. Um, and as far as the leaves, um, they would be, in terms of the three levels, they would be different colors. These are just examples, so don't, I mean, this is, uh, don't, uh, you know, I, I don't want to confirm these colors, but I met with the person who would be doing acrylic leaves. For example, this might be three examples. And they almost look like sea glass. And Ella, uh, Elise had mentioned that, which I think is a really apt description. But they're kind of like three different color levels. Like, for example, if we said this is the 350 level, this is somebody buying 600 would have this, somebody paying 1,000 would have that. Mm. So it would be kind of, and there again, these are just like rough ideas that I got from online. Here's another example. This is actually in a, um, a synagogue where they have, sorry, where they have the different color leaves. Um, and then what we would have is at the bottom, when this is put up in City Hall, there would be a, there would be a legend at the bottom saying, um, you, know, um, you know, this color, like and we have an example, this color green signifies the 350 level, this color signifies mm -hmm. the 600, this color. And then what I did was, um, and there again, this is just an example. This is a clear acrylic, which I just had kind of engraved to give you an example. But these would be in color, those three different colors. So if you can kind of imagine what it would look like. Mm -hmm. and, um, and just so we're clear on this, this one is engraved on the front. The actual leaves that would be attached to the wall would be engraved on the back. So there, if people came up, and we're touching it saying, hey, that's, you know, that's my right. husband's leaf or that's my granddaughter's leaf. It wouldn't be you know, wearing anything off. The engraving actually would be on the back. And then, like I said, if you can imagine it in three different colors like that. Um, so anyway, what I'm doing is um, the last two details that are left. And Liz, I, I gave you a call this week. I didn't well, know if you Yeah, were I wasn't in. <laughs> yeah. um, so what I did is I went ahead and met with Chris because I had to go meet with this a contractor on mm -hmm. this. Um, I met with Chris. The only thing that's missing from the brochure is she's going to kind of jazz it up with her designer. Uh, she's going to put a couple of photographs of trees, local trees. And then here, where the brochure is going to describe the different levels for the uh, donations, um, we're going to have the three pictures. So it'll show here, like for the 350, it'll be this color, 600 this color, 1,000 here. Mm -hmm. Then we'll have an enlarged version of it here. So that when people get this, they can say, okay, I understand that's going to be permanently installed in City Hall. Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, I'm just kind of, it's just sort of something that came to me. Um, I was wondering if you had thought about giving the levels names as opposed to putting the dollar amount in the thing. There's, there's, it just, it just well, feels more appealing to me to have yeah, what would I do if okay. on the brochure here? Yeah. And I'll give this to you. What is going to be is tier one is okay. 350, tier two so is six. Is that going to be there mm -hmm. as opposed to the dollar amount? Exactly. Oh, good. That'll, be on the, on the That'll be on the legend. On the, so on underneath the legend. this tree, Thanks. Mm -hmm. there'll be a legend. 
and it'll say tier one, tier one. and it'll have an example yeah. of that color. Cool. You know, like for example, if you had this in the shape of the. But are you yeah. also suggesting that each okay. one have a kind of a yeah cool like, name? That's what I was like. Why do cool? You know, I, I just I just uncomfortable. Oh, oak, oak, maple, oak. and yeah. you know. I'll get yeah, you I mean, could, but tier yeah. one, tier two, tier three. I just didn't like the idea of the dollar. No, no, no. no. We would over that. Okay. Got the it. only reason I wasn't going to do like an oak, an oak, a maple, and a poplar it's is because to be to cut all the different leaves that yeah. way. So you'll have oh. oaks, oh, maples, or tulip poplar. You know what I'm saying? The, the leaves will be different. It's supposed to be all one tree. Exactly. Someone might want yeah. it. So that's why. <laughs> yeah, so that's why if you think about, you know, this yeah. being on the wall and, I guess and the leaves being like this. Sort of wording. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would say tier one. Crepe myrtle, ornamental, and heritage. I mean, I'm, I'm just teasing, but no, I'm just, you know. Just no, you said that. I thought of like acorn immediately. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> acorn tuner. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Okay. You look like you had a question. Um, Did you have a question? Well, I, I get, my other question yeah. is uh, sort of like the, the, not the maintenance, but like the, the we're going to have to get these little acrylic things made up, right? And who's going to do that? And are they going to do that? And I, they, I, they're they're going to have a monopoly on making these little. Oh, yeah. you know, I, I'm just wondering how, how that's going to kind of work. Well, what out. we did, we, we checked out different companies. I found a company in Milton. That could actually do this. In fact, I met with him. Yeah. I'm meeting again with him today, but I met with him yesterday. I mean, how much is that going to cost to get this engraved? He's, he's going to give me a price. But when I called a company in New York that does this, mm -hmm. which I wanted to use somebody local instead of just mm -hmm. sending it off to New York, because yeah. I thought, let me let me give some business here to the local community. Yeah. Um, in New York, the acrylic leaves that would be in various colors <clears throat> versus do you remember originally when I had shown the picture of those metal leaves, yeah. which a lot of mm -hmm. churches and synagogues and hospitals use? To put it in perspective, the metal leaves cost about ten to twelve dollars a piece engraved. Mm -hmm. These um, cost almost twenty dollars engraved. But if we're talking about ordering a hundred to start, that's only two thousand dollars, and we have a ten thousand dollar budget. So we were going to start with a hundred of these uh, acrylic, and then we can add on to them. And this, the company is here in Milton, and they've been in business for twenty years. We're going to start with them in various colors. Yeah, and that was one of the decisions we have to make. We figure that most people will have their lower level tier one color. So we thought if we have to order, say, 100 to start so that we can put it up on the wall. And so, we, you know, we're not going to start if we have 30 people. You know, we don't want to just put 30 leaves up. We want to start with 100. So what we were thinking is by September, hopefully, we might have, we might have 30 or 40 people or companies that have contributed. So what we would do is we would have them engraved and put them here. But the other ones would be blank, right. and it would still be up. Yes, yeah. and most people are going to pay the lower level. So we would probably think about ordering maybe sixty of the tier one color, and maybe twenty of the tier two, and then whatever's left of the tier three. There's actually a, probably a formula for that, you know, in terms of. Uh, I could ask my wife, but I mean, in terms like the, yeah, the pyramid, you know, in terms of you're obviously going to have fewer of the higher ones, but exactly. it, it's kind of a, an average number. Of, Got it. Yeah. Is there anything else? Because it's, we're getting kind of down into the, oh, yeah. the details. Yeah, right. I'm but just but kind I, of watching. I, I the think time. generally speaking, sounds like this, this is well got thought. it. Really, yeah, she does. under control. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and we're, we're hoping, I'm hoping to get this out within three weeks. Cool. So I talked to Chris about that. Are you? Uh, that was my question. That are you sending it out to people, or or is it just going to be available down on the blog? Um, I think I'm going to have to talk to Chris about that. But she said that if she has these printed, like I think somebody did. You mention that. Had them at the, we could put them at the RBHA. The, yeah, if yeah. we had them in time. If we had them in time. Yeah, we, would, we would have them table. in as many places as possible. Then I could give you a bunch of them. You and could give them out to neighbors. From the city as well. Right? Yeah, it'll be and online. I'm sure Chris will yeah. send it out. She's yeah. really good about yeah. it. Yeah, it'll be online. On, and it says on the back, it'll be a website. website and they, the city does a lot of Facebook and Twitter. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah, it'll be on now. So. And I'm thinking, you know, next door downtown and all yeah. that. Yeah, somebody should put it on there. So yeah. So oh, I'm okay. keeping my fingers crossed for three weeks. Well, and you're, got and just one other point. You're going back to the 30 or so many people that are on Liz's list. Oh, more yes. than that. More it was than like that. 50 by the time yeah, there was. Yeah. So, so we're yeah, calling okay. them. So, there you so you, have, built in. you have that list of 50 already that you'll have to yeah. send them out to. Yeah, very cool. Well, and one last thing. It's cherry wood. I don't think you mentioned that. Katie kind of asked. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's made of cherry. So. Yeah, it's good to be a cherry wood. <laughs> Last detail. That sounds very nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, we're ready. we're gonna move on to new business. Is there someone here representing design standards? I know we don't have Jeff here I today. Somebody working with Jeff that knows where he is on that. 
No. Okay. So we will defer that. Okay. Okay. Ordinance and enforcement. And I think that's me. So <laughs> coming up on my fourth meeting with law oversight at the last meeting, um, Liz was there. Um, we're again, um, and the city and and the chair, people, folks are talking. Um, we're we're really um, entertaining or. or moving toward looking at goals, to making sure that we on the Law Oversight Committee look at what are our goals for the ordinance. Um, I think to date, pretty much, you know, the initial sort of thought was, is there low hanging fruit? Are there parts of it that don't work for people? And, you know, what became apparent to me in looking at it is that unless you know what it is you want to achieve, you know, the rest of the code, whatever it is, flows from that. So, you know, it's it's might be a little bit of an adjustment. So I'm gonna be talking to the chair and members of the committee and just see, you know, I've been talking to Liz, having Liz there, and we're really trying to look at, you know, what's most valuable, what's most important, and, and what's feasible. Um, and trying to see, go, go from there. So um, I, uh, I don't know, I'm feeling kind of optimistic at this moment about that, about kind of going in a bit of a different direction there and we'll just kind of see if the committee comes along and that's where we end up. And I, and I would presume that that would come out of the CDP. Be, yeah. it, it the, the goals be would be sourced yeah. by. Yeah. You know, I, I keep going back to our unique wooded seaside character. Right. Okay, and our tree-lined streets. And to me, you know, if you start there, and you can, and then you see kind of where we've been, where we are right now, and where we're headed, given what's currently in place, I think that helps direct where we're going forward. So I hope that's as clear as mud. But you know, <laughs> okay. Um, sure, just like I mentioned yeah. our guest a little earlier, we have asked the chair, Hoyt. Yeah, to come in um, mm -hmm. and give an update report uh, right. the July 19th right. commissioner's meeting. And um, he, the request was really in for two reasons. One, mm -hmm. simply to get an update right. and to see right. what's at, but also because there is some increasing frustration um, among the commissioners that, that the commissioners are feeling because of um, requests from the public, um, often related to this gentleman's Request, although I've never seen him before, but but similar kinds of yep. requests where things are not very clear and it seems kind of muddled out there. Got it. And yeah. um, it's like, what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. Why isn't this moving faster? Yes. I mean, I've yeah. heard that from some of my colleagues. Mm -hmm. Why don't we have more information? So, so hopefully Hoyt's discussion with the commissioners and anyone else that wants to participate on the 19th can help move this ahead. In some very positive ways. I'm, I'm hoping so. Yeah. What did, did he he had the gentleman that was in here earlier? Did I, I missed that part? Did he have um, he had complaints about? This is yeah, he's, specific to him. He's a gentleman, very specific to him. And the interesting thing is, I remember him speaking about well, exactly the same point. thing at that tree um, meeting we had. at the yep. tree meeting, which is probably in 2017. He has mm -hmm. poly trees on his property. He has an excess of the minimum required if you're doing a new build, and those are a nuisance to him, and he doesn't understand why he can't take them down. There's not, they're, they're healthy trees. Um, so that's, it was his Issue. The point that he may know a company that would come in and just yeah. whack him out well, of there. Yes. I mean, he, he was very forthcoming about you yeah. know something um, that people probably do or yeah. at least think mm -hmm. about doing. Mm -hmm. um, so, or uh, education, public support, and involvement. Um, who's working on education? Well, no, I was going to say the involvement is this oh. commemorative tree yeah. program. Mm -hmm. But I'm not uh, involved with the education okay. and public support. I have spoken to Andrea a couple times, mm -hmm. and she's just talked about trying to contact people who could do um, presentations on various things. And I've been kind of collecting some things that she also might consider, um, which I'm going to, you know, I hope I could share them with you. I mean, one thing that's kind of interesting is um, turn your backyard into a wildlife refuge. I mean, you can get your yard certified as a 
habitat. Um, and to me, this is more consistent mm. with the kind of landscaping and yards that go along with tr significant trees as opposed to lawns. Um, um, the other thing that is, you know, you all know that I tried to sort of champion um, a tree tour and that kind of fell by the wayside. But yeah. one of the things that I was going to suggest is that there are people in town that do tours, walking tours of Rehoboth. And I thought it would it might be cool to have talk to those folks and say, could you add something that's about awesome. trees yeah. to yeah. your, your yeah. walk and talk and you know, right. the history that's, that's of an them. excellent idea. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because the problems we ran into, I remember Chris was, mm -hmm. was telling us about this, was permission. You know, if we had people that right. wanted their houses to be on right. the special walk tour, they, they, there was something yeah. about, you know, we couldn't publish their, their address or we yeah. had to get there or we had to tell right. people where they couldn't step on the property or whatever. Right. So there were a lot of privacy issues but behind doing individual exactly. houses. But if someone yeah. who's walking around just says, Absolutely. you know, that's a lot, blah, blah, fine, and you know, yeah. the story is, yeah. these have been here for, since the, you know, 1700s, sure. and they volunteer, or this is, you know, and so that's something they might welcome. Yeah. I have a question, because Elise, I know um, you're a master gardener in Arlington, but you had mentioned something about in Delaware, there's a master gardener's. Oh, uh, there's a Sussex County. Sussex mm -hmm. County mm -hmm. chapter. Mm -hmm. master so gardeners. I think that would be a good I mean, contact. I think that would be a great place to yeah. go. Absolutely. Anybody that has ideas, please send them to Andrea. Well, okay. You know? I was just thinking, I'll, I will do that. Yeah. yeah. One thing is you could have the, um, could contact um, the uh, uh, Pickering, or not Pickering Creek, um, the uh, Botanic Garden found. Right. Um, yeah. Um, the, the Delaware. The Delaware. Yeah, the Delaware. Delaware. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, see if somebody would be interested in yeah. coming to speak about mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. um, they're mm -hmm. just uh, they're going to be opening mm -hmm. um, in September of this year. Yeah. Oh, I think okay. some of their some of their board members live in this area, I believe. Yeah, I think so. Too. Um, They've done. So. There, you can still get a tour there. I know mm -hmm. there's been groups that have gone through on tours, and it's still very much like if you're interested in. The industry, it's very interesting. The startup, if you're just there to look at plants and flowers, maybe it's not quite <laughs> not at there that yet. point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's sure. beautiful. Uh, I was just there a few weeks ago, and mm. it's um, for a fundraiser, and it's it's beautiful. Good. That's yeah. great. It's great. I mean, the, the plants are really coming. Yeah, that's really good. It's good. Greg Tepper's not there anymore, but okay. they're um, from the Kirk. How many? How big is it? How many acres do they have? A lot. Kind of one other thing I wanted to, to mention is, you know, I talked last time, or we talked last time about a letter regarding vision, mm -hmm. and um, you guys kind of got a copy of that. Um, I've been sort of rethinking this and, and um, have kind of done another draft and am looking at it. Uh, more as an educational kind of thing and kind of a reminder of our previous um, um, presentation to the mayor and commissioners. I guess kind of my thought is, is that we might catch more flies with honey than vinegar and that my first draft might have had a little more vinegar than, <laughs> than perhaps. Well, um, I, I've had conversations with some folks who I consider more um, politically astute than myself. <laughs> so I have, I've really kind of rethought the whole thing. Um, so, um, so what I'd like to do is kind of bring that back um, next time. Um, I mean, I just think this is an opportunity to kind of underscore things we've already said and really thank the mayor and commissioners for their inclusion in their visions of so many things that are directly or indirectly related to trees. Um, um, anyway, that's my thinking, so that's kind of my plan at this point, if that's okay with you guys. Sure. Um, the last thing is tree maintenance, all things improper. Does anybody have a rant? I mean, this sounds like an invitation for a rant. I don't know quite what. I don't know quite. What, does anybody know where this item came from? Tony didn't give me any insight no. in, into this item. No, and we I, did talk about topping trees. And I want to say to Liz that it's great to see that big old dead tree in the canal. 
that came down this week. Did you see what? Yeah. So he te Bobby texted me and was like, "Have you looked at it yet?" Because I was out the day yeah, he did it, and I, I said, "Not yet." And he goes, "Well, let me know." I said, "Oh gosh, what happened?" Well, it's and very unique what they did. There's one huge branch that still looks oh. alive going out over the canal. I said, and, and I told rest, him, big and he goes, well, that branch is going to cost as much as the other two put together. And I said, well, I mean, it's still structurally fine. I said, yeah. well, as long as when it dies, you go and remove it, I'm good. Well, yeah. <laughs> and if, if it were to fall, it's going to fall into the canal. Into the canal, not <laughs> just under a car. Or, over. Yeah. yeah, it was like three hunks, and one went out over the canal, and it was the smallest part, but alive. So he would have to rig that all back in, small yeah. piece. Small pieces. Yeah. He was like, well, "You're I watched good." Him the other day, do something. Where, where is that, Dick? Where is that? Tree? Right across from the hotel. Mm -hmm. That's where that You'll see the fresh cut yeah. spacing. Just in the parking lot. Oh, come here. Oh, the canal. Oh, canal. canal. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, canal. Yeah. 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 Okay, it's unique. It. It. You guys have got to look at oh, it because it's really I'll it's one it. of those things. It was probably the largest tree along there, and I think unfortunately it died because of the yeah yeah the fall last summer. Yeah. Yeah. I have one quick, quick question Shoot. which applies to this. Um, Susan, I think you had mentioned there's a couple plantings in park, some uh, park that's going on. And um, oh, he was, and I wanted park. to make sure yeah, <laughs> that park. once again, the watering, the proper watering is done for that immediately and when that's going in, those trees. Uh, yes, he told me this week, so. Okay. What, is, right. what is the location? But luckily so there's, a, <clears throat> there's a hose bib. Right and there's there. also, there you're going to have water bags, right? Yeah, so okay. there's a hose bib and the water bat, like, it'll be really easy. But is the to city going to water? Or, or yeah, because we have to go there every week anyways to do the mowing, so okay. that's not a problem. Can I, can I ask you a question about the one dead, clearly dead tree on Rehoboth Avenue? Which one? The one that's toward the... There's three. Front well, of, well the one that I always notice is the one near State Road when you first come in, off the State Road and head... East on Rehoboth Avenue, mm -hmm. it's it's one of those sort of trees in the median in on the, the median, edge in the median across just, from Remax. Maybe yeah, it's just yeah, been a kind of a dead stick for about three months. Yeah, so that one, the dead plum by the old Seven Eleven, and then there's one more dead dead one mm -hmm. by um, um, uh, Nicola's in the Avenue. So they're getting getting removed, but like everything else, if you do that, number one, it's not really hazard because if it kind of grows so small, yeah, it wouldn't scratch you. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately, by the time they leaf out in the late spring, and then they all were alive at that point. Yeah. So yeah. it's we yeah. pay a lot, a lot of money if you do them one at a time. So finance, um, like fiscally, it yeah. is much better. Like if we lump it in with the big. The big okay. things like they don't even I they don't you. even cost anything. So you. yeah, it's yeah. trying to balance the the budget and um, contractors unwilling to come and remove that. Nobody wants to do that in Rehoboth in the summer, too. Really? I kind of have to beg to get that done. Okay. So yeah, so, just well, day to, that's regular day to day business. What is the schedule for the lake project? Is that supposed to start in the fall? Oh, the Lake Avenue. Lake one? Avenue. I, I don't know. Okay. okay. If it, does anybody have anything else um, items to include on future agendas? Um, my guess is we're going to revisit design ordinance yes. enforcement, yes. education, public support involvement. That's going to be ongoing items. Um, the next meeting would be August 9th, I believe, if your calendar is correct. Mm -hmm. Any any final remarks, comments, questions? I think so. Okay. Good meeting. Thank you. Okay. Sergi for stepping okay. in. Thank, Thank you, Sergi. Yeah. So is Sergi no longer? She is ill. She is.